Hello, those of you on low def. Let me sync up my above camera. Hello, those of you on the above camera. <laughs> Greetings, unsettled souls, I should say. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I beat again. She's doing political commentary for the media speaks. And I might as well tell you all that I have been dealing with idiots all day. I am like the last person in the world who should be on air right now. But you know what? I have a job to do. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something that I never, I've never done before. I told this idiot person in my life that the next time this person pissed me off, it was on. And I said I was going to put this person's cell phone number on the freaking internet. This person threatened to do it to me. Okay. See this phone? 330-371-4530. If you want to be on the show, call me. Don't text me. I'm just going to let it tick. Call me. If this phone rings at any point during the show, I am putting whoever calls on speakerphone. Take them the call. Now, if you happen to catch this show later like everybody else does, feel free to prank me. I do know how to use a caller block. I'm not nearly as stupid as I look. So there you go. So if anybody wants to put my cell phone number online, it would be 330-371-4530. Now, the next time this person pisses me off, I'm doing it to them. You already have my number. Do I look like I can afford two cell phones? Trust me, it's the only one I have. Um, Freebeacon.com, Iran, U.S. encouraging Islamic Republic to keep illicit missile tests a secret. Now, for some reason... This hasn't garnered the attention that I expected it to. This bothers me greatly. It bothers me more than putting my 330-371-4530 cell phone number online. They, they so didn't think I would do this. You don't know this. I just handed somebody's ass to them. They now have nothing to stand on. I'm so happy right now. I just blew somebody's boat out of the water. Give me a minute. I'm very happy. All right. Now that I'm done being happy. We have Obama telling Iran to cheat on issues that revolve around whether or not me, you, your mom or dad or anybody else is safe. That's a nightmare, friend. That, that would be called betrayal. That would be called a traitor in any, in any other world. Now, you're going to hear this ticking. If it's ticking, it means that it's a text. It's probably a friend of mine, so ignore it. But if it rings, I will pick up on air because somebody thought they wanted to call me out. You don't call me out. I call you out. Uh, a senior Iranian military commander claimed that U.S. officials are quietly encouraging the Islamic Republic to keep its illicit ballistic missile tests a secret so as not to raise concerns in the region. According to Persian language comments, I'd like to know where that was from. But let me tell you something. Persian language comments. Okay, I question it a little. But here we go, friends. Um, with great sources like that, how could I question it, right? Here's my problem with this. As Trump said, we gave them billions, that B with a B, billions of dollars. They agreed to not do certain things to get that billions of dollars. Now, you're saying, but Sam, you claim to be a libertarian. People should do whatever they want. I, I agree with that completely. However, if you sign a contract and you're not at gunpoint, as Iran did, saying, if we get this money, the deal is we will not do things such as I'm commenting on here. Now, what you have is not a victory, but you have lying. Breach of contract. 
unfair lying scum is what you have. I've got more viewers now. 330-371-4530. Are you call though? I am putting you on air. And I'm not call screening. So if you call and you're, man, you're the ugliest of mo foot the besensu the hub the hoop the can't. I'm just going to let it go over air. So we're going to see who calls. This could be fun. Amil al Now, be prepared, though. If you attack me on air, I'm going to rip you a new one on air. Be prepared. I am not your mother's talk show host. Amil Ali Hazada, commander of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, who would be wise not to call here, aerospace and aerospace and missile force, said in recent remarks that the Obama administration does not want Iran to publicize its ongoing missile tests which have raised questions about the Islamic Republic's commitment to last summer's comprehensive nuclear agreement. Question? What question is there? They promised to not test nuclear weaponry. They put their name on it, and you know what? Their name means nothing. Okay, that's why you swear on the Bible, because clearly swearing by Allah has no weight whatsoever. They lied. Okay, that is my problem. If they were going to go ahead and, as a sovereign nation, test nuclear missiles under the guise of a power plant, I think it's very unwise, especially since they built the power plant in an earthquake zone. However, I'd be willing to say, okay, I get it, I accept it. This is not okay. This is like saying, okay, look, I'm going to buy a car from you for $300. It's a crappy car. Don't ask me why I picked 300, but I'm going to go with it. It's a crappy car, but it's got four good tires. I can use the door for my car that's barely worth more than $300. And I like the carpeting inside, so I'll take it. Then when you go to buy the car, the guy took the four tires and the carpeting out of it. Now it's not even a $300 car. That is a lie. Now, you can't say, well, Sam, you're a libertarian. It's his car. He can do whatever he wants. If you sign an agreement, another analogy. I am in the band passing time. I have signed an agreement with Night Stalker Records that we are signing to Night Stalker Records. Now, if Joe Glow Company down the street says, hey, I know you said you were signed to Night Stalker. But why don't you go ahead and bring passing time over to, to, to our label, X label, and they pay us even more money. They buy us even nicer gear, which our label is amazing. I'm using an analogy. So I go with them. Yeah, I know. Night Stalker has been loyal to the band, but I'm just going to hose them right over. Everyone listening to this would call me a piece of filth for that. You know what? If I was to do something like that, I'd be a piece of filth. So why is it you decide that it's okay for Iran to do this? Okay, we're not talking about records here. We're talking about a nuclear missile. So I think it matters a little more with Iran. At this time, the Americans are telling us, don't talk about missile affairs. And if you conduct a test or a maneuver, don't mention it. Thank you, Mr. Traitor Obama. I don't care if you were born in this nation or not. You clearly act like you weren't. Hajazida, who was quoted as saying during a recent Persian language speech that it was translated by the Middle East Research Institute. If we agree to this, they will advance another step and say, don't conduct a missile test at this time. And also, don't do it in the Persian Gulf region. After that, they will tell us, why do we need your missiles to have a range of 2,000 kilometers anyway, as you reportedly said. In other words, what they're trying to say is that they're going to consider America to be evil, and they're going to lie to Americans. Now, you might be a Bernie Sanders fan, and if you are, then you hate America, and you hate everything that gave you everything you have. Okay, fine. Fine. You're an Iranian. Then let me ask you something. Wouldn't you say, hey, I'm not doing business with you? Bernie Sanders fans, we can be friends here. We don't, we don't need to argue. We're, we're, we're going to be good for a minute. Bernie Sanders fans, would you do business with Donald Trump? Yeah, I'm probably voting for him, depending on who he picks as VP. Um, 
would you would you do a deal with me? No, no, you you wouldn't. Why? Because even if you're a Bernie fan, you likely have some kind of principles that you try to stay with. Now I understand that we have idiots all over, and they make you do things you would have never imagined you would do because they're idiots. But that's not what we're talking about here. This was a welfare decision to lie, which is another reason that while you have many reasons to not trust the West, you also clearly have reasons not to trust Islam. And if that makes you mad, then welcome to the correct views. Call me and let me know, 330-371-4530. Um, CA.news.yahoo.com, National Security Advisor, will not testify at House panel, the White House. Listen to this. Proving Trump right here. This is really short. Let me go to screen share. Those of you new to the show, uh, I have people say, why do you look like you're looking in two directions at one time? Do you have a wandering eye? No. But I do have idiots that leave stupid-ass comments on my comment line. I also have an HDF camera up here and a low def camera down here, which is actually a lot more and probably not as interesting as the wandering eye theory. But you'd never want to let the truth get in the way of a good story, now would you? This is really short. Listen, uh, behind me here is fact cam for HDF. The White House confirmed on Monday that Ben Rhodes, the Deputy National Security Advisor, would not testify at a White House Oversight Committee. For those of you that are on low def, if uh, Google keeps, quits trying to lock up on me here, I'm going to go to screen share. The way it works is uh, low def down here gets to see the article, but they don't get as good of a video. You guys get better video quality, but have to read the article behind me. Uh, the panel had asked Rhodes to appear after a New York Times article had suggested that he had manipulated the public debate over the Iran deal. This Iran deal is every bit as horrible as uh, as it was said to be by Donald Trump. It doesn't really matter whether you hate him or not, because let me tell you what, most of you that hate him tend to believe in global warming. I don't. I know it's not real. However, we're going to go again, go to what Glenn Beck called the safety tree. My, he used to be amazing. I don't know what happened to him. But we're going to go to the safety tree. Here's the way the safety tree works, as I understood, as I steal the idea. At least I admit it. What does this slipknot says? I'm just a bastard, but at least I admit it. Um, most of you who hate Donald Trump are greeny weenies. You believe that man is warming the planet. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Iran is building a nuclear power plant on a known fault zone in Iran. Known by who? Known by this long-haired guy that you don't like? No. I didn't come up with it. I'm not smart enough to. However, I am smart enough to read the works that those who did. These same scientists that warned about the dangers of an earthquake in Fukushima are the same people who are warning about the earthquake zone where Iran in Bashar is putting up the nuclear power plant. I can't be more clear. Chris Busby, Lauren Moray, Helen Colicott, these are all people that are not conservatives, I might add, um, at all. And they agree with me on this. So you, you leftists that are, found this show through some curse are like really agreeing with me right now and you're really confused because you're like man i i hate trump but this guy's right maybe you shouldn't build a nuclear power plant on an earthquake zone we're not as different as you thought we were um let me go to this real quick speaking of global warming back to all my libertarian friends who know what logic reason and common sense are the daily news an inconvenient review the name of the movie was inconvenient truth after 10 years that would be a decade for you Drake fans. They don't know. After 10 years, Al Gore's film is still alarmingly inaccurate. It's been nearly one full decade since former Vice President Al Gore released his film An Inconvenient Truth. 
It set shockwaves through American politics and emboldened environmental activists to push for more regulations on American businesses. Did this help the planet any? No, because man's not warming the planet. He just lied. However, it did make sure that you paid a lot more for your heating bill for you and your family. That's what it made sure of. Gore warned increasing carbon, di carbon dioxide emissions would spur catastrophic global warming that would cause more extreme weather, wipe out cities, and cause ecological collapse. And to stop global warming, humans needed to ditch fossil fuels and basically change every aspect of their lives. But it says watching an inconvenient truth is like sort of going back in time. Back to a world where flip phones were cool and Futurama was still putting out new episodes, um, both of which I hated, I might add. A world where a bitter presidential candidate was trying to rebrand himself as an environmentalist crusader. So was he right? But that's the question. That's what matters. It's the correct views. Was he right? Well, in honor of the up and coming 10th anniversary, the Daily Caller News Foundation rewatched an inconvenient truth just to see how well Gore's warnings of future climate disaster lined up with reality. Gore has been harping on global warming since at least the 1980s, but it wasn't until 2006 that he discovered a way to become massively wealthy off making movies about it and investing in subsidized green energy. Now, here's what's funny. I tell a lot of people here, take emergency today, but if you don't, and then take the generic version. I don't really care. I don't always buy emergency. I usually don't buy emergency. I buy whatever the generic is. The point is you want to aim for a lot of B vitamins. You want to aim for 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. That way you only have 1,000 to make up for yourself. Why do you want to hit 3,000 milligrams? Does the, R does the RDA tell you to? No, but Chris Busby does. And Chris Busby is right, and the RDA is wrong. See how that works? There's right and there's wrong. Welcome to the correct views. Gore opens the film talking about nature, and then jumping to a presentation he's giving where he shows the first image ever taken of the Earth from space. From that image, he jumps right into making alarmist claims about global warming, which isn't happening. For instance, Kilimanjaro still has snow. That is a, a massive mountain for you Lady Gaga fans. One of the first glaring claims Gore makes is about Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. He claims Africa's tallest peak will be snow-free within a decade. And guess what? We're here and there is still snow there. It doesn't take a scientist to figure it out. You can simply look at it from recent photos posted on uh, TripAdvisor.com. There's the link behind me. And for those of you on low def, right there where my mouse is, is the link. In 2014, ecologists actually monitoring Kilimanjaro's snowpack found that it was not even close to being gone. It meant shrunk a little. But ecologists were confident that it would be around for the foreseeable future. The change, by the way, I found this in another article, was mathematically in line with the margin of error that we think we've seen throughout that region through all of history, long before we found out how to run a car. There were going, ongoing several studies, but preliminary findings show that ice is nowhere near melting. This is from Amani Kikodi. He's an ecologist at Mount Kilimanjaro National Park from Itabra News. So I'm giving you sources to prove this here. Gore also left out the 15-year hiatus in warming. That means a stopping. He also claims the temperature rise from increases in man-made carbon dioxide emissions were uninterrupted and intensifying. He goes on to claim that heat waves will become more common, like the one that killed 35,000 people across Europe in 03. Sounds terrifying until you actually look at what happened to global temperatures after Gore's film was released. Global temperatures, which he was wrong about, showed little to no warming trend after Gore released the film. In fact, surface temperature data showed no significant global warming for a period of 15 years, starting in the early 2000s. Satellite-derived temperature, it goes on, showed that until the recent El Nino, which is unrelated to global warming, both sides agree on that, by the way. 
Greenies, do not accuse El Nino of being global warming, so please don't call me at 330-371-4530 with something so stupid, because then I'll just hang up on you. Until in recent, until the recent El Nino, no statistically significant warming trend for more than 20 years. Gore's movie was released right in the middle of the so-called global warming hiatus. In other words, it wasn't warming when he did it. The weather has not gotten worse. He predicted, uh, Mr. Gore, that storms would be more frequent and intense as man-made emissions warm the oceans. Of course, when the oceans got warmer, that causes stronger storms. He said this same year we had some strong strings of hurricanes and we set a new record for tornadoes. So everybody did their good little government pandering, panicking, and what did they get? Well, his film came out after Hurricane Trina uh, ravaged the Gulf Coast, so they emotionally latched onto it. And the, fitty, the footage of destruction from the storm featured predominantly in his film. And he mentions that the U.S. was hit by a rash of severe storms in the early 2000s and how Japan saw a record number of typhoons. And he talked about the insurance industry uh, going under but Gore's claim, it says, is more hype than actual science, since storms aren't more extreme since 2006. In fact, not even findings from the United Nations ever intergovernmental panel on climate change supports Gore's claim. Now, I can't wait to see all the hate that comes into my comment line. You might attack my dad, too, because you don't like it. You might attack my hair, because I'm a hippie. You might say, Sam, you need to eat a little less. Sam, you might say, Sam, you're not heavy enough. Believe it or not, I've heard it. I think they're crazy. You might not like Zach Wilde behind me. You might not like the fact that I don't have a flat screen TV on the show. And by all means, all of it's probably true. However, I do like my tattoo. However, facts. Could you bother, maybe, to leave me some hate about where I'm wrong? No, because I'm not wrong. Welcome to the correct views. You don't have to like me. I'm still right. The, IPP, the IPCC, excuse me, I wasn't right about that, found in 2013 that there was, quote, limited evidence of changes in extremes associated with other climate variables since the mid-20th century. The article says the IPCC also found no significant observed trends in global tropical cyclone frequency storms. Hurricanes and major hurricane counts have been identified over the past 100 years in the North Atlantic Basin. In other words, Gore has failed. The North Pole still has ice. He said it wouldn't. He said within the next 50 to 70 years, it'd be completely gone. And polar bears and all sorts of Arctic animals would be threatened. He did incorrectly predict in 08 that there would be no Arctic ice by 2013. But even in this case, Gore is likely wrong because the Arctic's geological setting. The Arctic is almost completely surrounded by land, so the ice that forms there tends to stay there. And it's still staying there, in case you're wondering. Arctic ice coverage has shrunk in recent decades, but it's not likely that we will see a summer where the North Pole is completely ice-free. I doubt that the Arctic will be free of ice in any summer, although the total area may be greatly reduced in the future if it continues to warm there. This is from Chip Knappenberger, a climate scientist at the Libertarian Cato Institute. And he said such a situation would not be worrisome as there is ample evidence that this has occurred in the past. And clearly, polar bears and everything else up there has managed to survive. Now, this article does a very bad job of explaining what he just said because it doesn't make clear that this warming that we know happened in this region prior was before cars. It was before factories. It was probably before bows and arrows. In other words, it's a money racket. Man isn't warming anything. Polar bears are sure thriving 
in that region right now. There's a link right there for it. Let me go. I'm going to make sure it's on now because they'll say I didn't, he didn't show the link. He sucks. He's got long hair and tattoo. There it is. A day after tomorrow, Style Ice Age is still in there. Ray. In 04, the film The Day After Tomorrow, in the movie The Gulf Stream, which scientists say is essential for regulating the climate, such now shuts down and ends up causing a global ice age. Gore hints that this could happen if Greenland, Greenland's ice sheet melts and brings more cold water into the North Atlantic. Yeah. Not even gonna, obviously, that's what he claimed. But Austrian scientists, however, totally debunked claims. The Gulf Stream or the AMOC was weakening. The claims of strengthening or reducing of the AMOC and therefore pure speculation. In other words, it's not happened. We know the jet stream is alive and well because Fukushima is full of people that lie to us about the severity of the problem and the nuclear meltdown. And the jet stream is certainly working just fine. It's bringing all of the Japanese toxins right over to the West Coast where people continue to live and then are going to wonder how they ended up with cancer. Friends, I got three more stories to get to. I do want to remind you that the show is supported by Sticker Junkie. Sticker Junkie, as you can see from the sticker behind me, which looked amazing before I scuffed it, it wasn't their fault. Sticker Junkie, you go, you get your stickers made. It's real easy. You get your stickers made. Maybe you take a picture of my face and you put a dartboard around it. And you say, I hate Sam. You then go to Sticker Junkie and you get that printed. That way, every time you throw that dart at your sticker dartboard, you will be sure to see every aspect of my face that you want to throw darts into. And you want to know what's even better? You're going to get a discount. Say, I'll check out. Correct views. He might have it under the correct views. You're going to get a discount because you listen to the show. Because Sticker Junkie makes amazing stickers. They make them cheaply. <laughs> And they do so because you're listening to the show. You're going to get a discount. Guys, Kit Daniels, Mexico won't take Cuban migrants and tells Panama to dump them at the U.S. border. This can't be more mind-blowing to me. You have Mexico condemning Trump and condemning the nasty American, I think is the word they use. The ugly American, excuse me, of being racist for not allowing our borders to be open to people of whom we have no idea who the freak they are. And yet, Mexico closes its border to people who they don't know who they are. Are they racist? Come on. I can't answer, can you? Yeah, logic hurts, doesn't it? <sighs> Hypocrisy. The Mexican government attacks Trump, but they do not help migrants. Mexico is allowing Panama to dump nearly 4,000 Mexican migrants on the U.S. border. Revealing the hypocrisy of Mexican officials as they attack Trump's immigration policies. And I, I want to say here, this is going to be a problem because I am probably, probably voting for Trump. There are things that he can do to lose my vote. Uh, if he picks Chris Christie, if he picks Jeb Bush as a running mate, or Julie Giuliani, I, he loses my vote. Sorry, be like, he loses my vote. Um, if he picks Sarah Palin, I'm not crazy about her, but I'll vote. Uh, it's fine. She did great things for the economy in Alaska and never got credit for it. And I know what it's like to do great things and not get credit for it. So I might still vote. Um, Trump is going to be elected whether I do or don't like it at the time or not. Because he speaks common sense. And that's rare. And there's a lot to be said for speaking common sense. Let me get into what I'm talking about here. The Cubans have been stranded in Panama after Nicaragua closed its border last year, preventing them from traveling north to the U.S. So the Panama government asked Mexican officials if they could simply fly the Cubans 
just south of the U.S.-Mexican border. Yeah, because the dumb gringo will take them. They don't know any better. The airless announcement was followed with word Monday that Panama would close its southern border with Colombia to Cubans without visas, the AFP reported, underscoring how both Panama and Nicaragua protect their borders better than the U.S. does. It's certainly revealing. It says how Mexico won't take in Cuban migrants, but they expect the U.S. to do so, despite the fact that Cubans would likely have an easier time culturally assimilating into another Latin American country. Yes, predominantly Catholic, of which America is not. Predominantly Spanish-speaking, of which America is not. It's certainly revealing how Mexico won't help, though, isn't it? It's also revealing how Mexican politicians refuse to help Cuban migrants while simultaneously attacking Trump for proposing a border wall, acting as if the U.S. doesn't do enough for illegals, even though Mexico routinely abuses their illegals' human rights. Mexico is one of the countries where illegal migrants are highly vulnerable to human rights violations, and they become victims of degrading sexual exploitation and slavery-like practices, and they are denied access to both education and health care. But... Mexico is demanding that we reform how we treat their citizens who sneak into the country. How do they treat uh, Panama's Cuban citizens who sneak into their country? Instead, it says members of Mexico's fleeing population sometimes become animately vocal once they enter the U.S. illegally and join protests organized by leftist coalitions against our already incredibly lax border policies. But in Mexico, don't think this type of behavior would be tolerated. This is from Adam Salazar. For starters, illegal immigrants are barred from upsetting the equilibrium of the national demographics, according to Mexico's policy. In other words, you can't have too many people that are not assimilated and native to their demographics be a member of the country. But in America, you're supposed to let any asshole swarm in that wants to. Yes, I said it. Under Mexico's immigration law, illegal immigration is considered a felony. It could be punishable up by two years in prison and a fine of 305,000 pesos. What if Trump had tried to do something like that here? Or they'd call him racist. Well, you know what? I call that a double standard. You know what? I also call it the correct view. Friends, theguardian.com. And one of our dumb bees of the day, I swear to God, this is one of the stupidest stories ever. It's not bad enough that we have trollops like Nicki Minaj having women with beautiful asses make themselves into fat, ugly asses. We got this. I have to be taller. The unregulated world of India's limb lengthening industry. This, you know what, when these people end up in agony later, I'm going to have very, very little sympathy for them. Because at some point, you become too stupid for anyone to care about you. Kamal never told her friends where she really went for six months last year. It should have been the insane asylum. The 24-year-old from the town of Kota, where they must breed crazy people, in western India, went to see Dr. Amar Sarin, who should be disbarred, who's an orthopedic surgeon in Delhi, who was probably ashamed of him, who made her three inches taller. It's a procedure which involved breaking the bones in her legs and wearing a brace until she could walk again, because she's a freaking idiot. Her parents, who are idiots, had to sell the family's ancestral lands so that she could get the surgery. But for Kamal, an extra height was worth it. And that's why Kamal should be in a rubber room. I have so much confidence now, said the idiot. I was 4'6", and people used to make fun of me, and I couldn't get a job. Now my younger sister is doing it also. You know what? There are a large number of men in this world that love their women extra tiny. Like tiny enough that you have to shake the sheets in the morning to find them. I know because I am one of them. So she turned a beautiful woman into, I don't know what, Beyonce. That's as gross as you can get. 
In a country where height, I did say it, in a country where height is considered attractive, Kamal is one of a growing number of young Indians using their increasing prosperity to improve their marriage and career prospects by full, by fueling cosmetic surgery. In other words, they are hacking up their bodies for a social structure that makes no sense. This is a country that's never seen punk, punk rock. That's all I can think. Um, also, it needs to be noted here that the doctor says, well, if you could see, it's worth it when you see how much their self-esteem grows. No, it's worth it when you drop the PC crap and call a mental disorder what it is. When you defile an otherwise beautiful body to sit in, to fit into a social norm, then you are an idiot. And you shouldn't get a job, you should get a straight jacket. That's the correct views. Friends, and that brings us to the dumb All right, guys, I might be ugly, but at least I am not an idiot. And I have a big schlong. Um, CNS News. Hey, I'm not running for public office. Maybe when I do, I won't say such things. CNS News, but it'll still be true. Obama, by almost every measure, America and the world are better off than they were eight years ago. Well, first of all, that's setting the bar awful low. And when you consider eight years ago, we had Bush. And he let the only vote I ever cast that I really regretted was for Bush. But the fact that I was voting against Kerry, I, I, yeah, I didn't like Bednarik. I know you guys are all going to say, Sam, you were libertarian by then. You know what? I wanted to take this hammer and beat Bednarik's head in. If I had to listen to that whine in for eight years or four years, I'd have killed him. I'm sorry. Nobody wants to hear a whine. Repeat. Nobody wants to hear a whine. I'd rather be shot. Um, delivering the commence, I'd rather vote for Bush. Delivering the commencement address at Rutgers University in New Jersey Wednesday, President Barack Obama, another idiot, told the graduates that the good old days weren't that good. And that both America and the world are better than they were even eight years ago. We're going to address this in May. When you hear someone longing for the good old days, take it with a grain of salt. He said he said it twice because he thought it made him sound smart. It didn't. In fact, he said, by almost every measure, America and the world is better than it was 50 years ago or 30 years ago or even eight years ago. Well, let's think about this for a minute. Eight years ago, there was a... Less than good man named Gaddafi in Libya who had his country working. The Christians were not bothered by the Muslims, and Muslims of different faiths were not killing each other. America, within the last eight years, under Obama, with the help of Hillary Clinton, removed said less than good man, Gaddafi, fuzzy head, from leadership. What we have now is truly evil, and it makes the slightly less than good man, Gaddafi, look like Mother Teresa. By comparison, we have ISIS, we have head cutting, we have rapes, we have genital mutilation, we have slavery, we have a caliphate, we have hell. And that's just one area that I can think of where we are not better off than we were eight years ago. Listen to what this idiot says. Here's a transcript from uh, Rutgers. Point number one, when you hear someone looking for the good old days taken with a grain of salt, or we have in a great nation and we are rightly proud of our history. Okay. We are beneficiaries of the labor and the grit and the courage of generations that came before us. You mean before you further the practices of George Bush and brought in NAFTA. 
and kept I didn't bring it in, but I should say strengthened NAFTA, which has weakened the labor and grit and courage of past generations that were doing better. I guess it's part of human nature, he said, especially in times of change and uncertainty. The uncertainty is largely due to what you have done, Mr. Obama. To want to look backwards and long for some imaginary past when everything worked. Not everything worked, but more things worked than they do now. The economy hummed. That's because under you it doesn't. And all politicians were wise. You certainly are not. Some have been, some have not been. And every child was well-mannered. At least they weren't calling each other nigga like we are now to the same degree. Yes, it was happening. I get it. It was not considered a good idea. It's now considered normal. And America pretty much did whatever it wanted around the world. Well, now ISIS is doing pretty much whatever they want around the world. So it looks like you, Mr. Obama, are wrong in every way. And that doesn't surprise me because, let's face it, you always get the dumbie of the day. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. If you'd like to donate, I would greatly appreciate it. You can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me, it goes towards a better show. And that's what I'd love to give you. You know what? Everything costs money. Let me show you something. Let me unplug this. Bam. There's one of the three lights. God. That's right. Studio lighting costs money. Computer that you're looking at here costs money. Camera up there costs money. Research time, well, I, I'm working for free. Do me a favor, help me. I'm going to put the money back into the show. I'm not going to be pimping yo, nigga. I'm not like that, okay? I am somebody who is trying to bring you a good show. I am someone trying to say black man, white man, Asian man, male, female, left, right. Let's realize who our enemy is here. It is not color. It is not tattoos. It is the way that we are being led to think. Good night, friends. God bless.